and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Model Craft Bench and another quick inbox review for you today. Uh, today's willing victim is this, the Tamiya 148th F35A Lightning 2. And what a beauty it is too. I've just picked this up. I am going to use this for bare naked build 2. So I'm going to follow up that janky Revel Hurricane with what should be a great example of a company at the peak of injection molding kit art we'll see but for this video we're just going to do the inbox so without further ado when you open the box it's quite untamia like i will i have taken the bags off these main parts but note how uh, you know the sprues are all just hanging around in there and there's quite a lot of extra space I would have expected normally that there might be a sort of separate box in there to put the canopies in or something but it's all just floating around in the style of a normal kit but anyway let's have a look and see what we get might as well start with these since they're already out we've got two rather splendid solo sprues that just have fuselage or well it's the whole aircraft really isn't it so a top and a bottom half um, and when you look closely at these, they're really quite spectacular because there are all kinds of corners and hollows and things all over these and, and they're just beautifully moulded everywhere as best as I can see so far. Now, the ram detail, the tape, the joints. So much is said about this stuff everywhere, always about these kits and some of them do look spectacularly bad, it has to be said. Um, personally I'm not a huge fan of representing it in the raised manner at all in scale model form because it is just tape it's a bit like the argument I always have with rib tapes on fabric covered aircraft a rib tape on a real aircraft is the thickness of a piece of fabric so clearly in 170 second scale you shouldn't really be able to see it or 48 or even 30 seconds so it's a personal thing and everyone's got a different standpoint but I'll try and I'll shine the light off it you can see when I angle it the panels become relatively obvious but if you sort of back away a bit not so much I'm hopeful that actually when painted and decaled this shouldn't look too bad at all uh, but yes in my opinion just decals for this would suffice because they would be thick enough on their own very standard Tamiya stuff, it's very very smooth, it's beautifully moulded. On the inside there's all sorts of framework looking stuff and big locating pegs for things which all looks quite heartening. That's your upper aeroplane. Lower one there's even more of the tape detail on this and it with it being raised it almost starts to look a little bit bizarre because there's so much of it in a small space. Again, I don't think the video is making that look bad at all. It's almost a little bit too crowded, a bit like when you have an awful lot of panel lines and rivet details close together it can sometimes start to just look a bit weird. So yes, big big openings all braced by sprues and inside again we've got lots of sort of locating detail going around all sorts of holes presumably that can be opened up for various things labelled Tamiya 2022 and again all very very clean so let's get into the bags I haven't opened is sprue G. Clearly these are the intake parts. They're not going to make up to seamless intakes obviously but the way it's been broken down is going to be as close as you're going to get really with an injection molded part. You've got um, compressor faces and turbine faces there and then the exhaust pipes and the beginnings of the jet pipes as well. And interestingly what appear to be two different inserts for the canopy an open and closed 
probably yes, an open and closed version. So there's internal detail in there. And it bulks it out because real jet canopies are quite sturdy constructions actually. All very good stuff. Next up we have a departure. No staples. It's an ordinary heat shrink bag. Personally, I have disappoint about this. I don't know why. It really doesn't make any difference, but it's just a it's a tamer thing, isn't it? Those irritating stapled bags. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm contrary. This is sprue eh? And there's all sorts going on here. A huge great compartment sprue here uh, part sorry clearly locates into all that molded sort of structure on the inside of the top half uh, and encompasses the wheel base and presumably a weapons base going to sit in the middle there we've got wheels or at least half of them this is the brake side we have an pilot whether or not you're a fan of a pilot figure I actually am and it's usually irritating when it's so hard to get crew figures for models. Um, they are available aftermarket, but they're incredibly expensive for what they are, actually. There's seat parts, some pylons, some undercarriage parts, and obviously here we've got the beginnings of the main cockpit tub. Again, it's all beautifully moulded and exactly what you would expect of Tamiya. Let's just bring you in close on this pilot's helmet. It's absolutely beautiful. Just quite a, a simple one here. Tower planes at a couple of fairings and what looks like a nose but when you look more carefully it, it's a wow so you've got a sort of X shaped framework so that's all protecting this and feeding it so it's partially outside structure but there's also a lot of Sort of an overlapping area for that to really nicely locate into the rest of the fuselage. There's some internal detail, nothing major. Large locating pegs again. And more of that raised up radar absorbent material detail. So far just the one bag that's not stapled. Curious. So I think this is the sprue that's been getting all the press. This is F. Sprue F. And just look at that. Phenomenal bit of moulding. All kinds of pipe work and boxes and framework going on there that was absolutely stunning for an injection molded part absolutely incredible also sort of separate pipes large pipelines to go in there doors and end plates absolutely phenomenal all of these doors do have internal detail also and unfortunately I can see quite a lot of ejector pin marks in those um, or should I say maybe these doors are actually yeah glued into these so this is the internal part of this panel um, unfortunately you would think that would be the perfect excuse to not have ejector pins on the visible side but unfortunately not we'll see I'm going to build it and I'm going to build it without paint so we will see. Alright, on to sprue E. 
I know these, these are in the order they're coming out of the box, so it's obviously not in alphabetical order. Have undercarriage legs. More wheel parts, the fins. What look like some separate flying surfaces, and I'm going to assume that this is all related to the nose wheel bay with the nose leg moulded there. Not quite as stuffed with detail as that huge panel, but really, really very good. And all of it is just so cleanly moulded. There's not a there's not a hint of flash anywhere on any of these pieces so far. And lastly, a bag with two in it. Yeah, replication. So we've got two of these. CD combo sprues here. So I'll take one aside and we'll just focus in on the one. Weapons and wheels. I did look at the instructions, so, um, so I think I can remember what the weapons are, but forgive me if I get them wrong. I believe we have GBU 12s, paved ways, um, AMRAM, and AIM 9X and then the GBU 31 JDAM which coincidentally stands for Genesis Designs and Model Craft not Joint Delivery Attack Munition just in case you're wondering and some exhaust parts and that leaves us with the transparencies there is a small pocket with a couple of pieces of wire in it. It's wire, not tube, and I think it's probably steel because it's quite stiff. I don't know what that's for. For some reason, there are two canopies. Best I could tell, there is no difference between them. They're both labelled as H. I'm going to scratch it to get that staple out of the way. They're both lightly tinted in a sort of brownish, yellowy brown hue, which I think you can see quite happily actually. This one has a minor scuff on the top. <laughs> That's stunning, isn't it? Absolutely beautifully done. It does have here what you might take to be a central seam, but I don't believe it is. I think that's probably um, a representation of the, the canopy shattering cord MDC because it goes all the way around so yeah two of those uh, and as I say I can see zero difference between the two so I don't know why there are two supplied and then there's this tiny sprue which is clear plastic non-tinted and again the staples are doing their best to endanger these parts okay. and this is windows for various sighting devices I believe for the most part probably some light lens windows and such Again, absolutely beautifully done, and where the parts are meant to be painted, they've got a sort of a frosted finish on them, so it's quite easy to see where you need to mask them. Lovely stuff. So that's all of the plastic parts, and then you get this veritable wad of paperwork and decals. So let's have a trot through this and see what we have. stick into my bag come on there we go right instruction manual curiously small I'm look through that in a moment a little fold out in uh, information sort of leaflet in various languages 
English, German, French on this side. And Japanese on that side. Standard tech tips. And then this lot is all colouring information. So two in actual colour. Goodness gracious. This is massive. This is A2, I think. Yeah, four times A4. This is RAM coating early version. A and B. This is showing you where all the different colours for all those bits of tape and area is meant to go. And on the back, goodness me, ram coating late version Z13 overcoat, and this is for all the others. There are various little notes throughout these, and of course, everything sports the Lockheed Martin logo. It's one of them. And this one is the same, huge fold out scheme A. This is scheme A 34, 34th Fighter Squadron, the 388th Fighter Wing, US Air Force Combat Commander, Hill Air Force Base, Utah, September 2015. on the back stencil placements note the long list scheme A through J we do have a lot of options for the scheme in this they are all exactly the same obviously in terms of colour they all have slightly different markings on them so, scheme A is that American one we just looked at Scheme B, Japanese, 302nd Fighter Squadron, 3rd Wing, JSDF, Misawa Air Base, 2022, which has a small eagle style tail fin on it. Scheme C, Royal Norwegian Air Force, Keflavik, March 2020. It's just got a sort of triangle on it. C, D. Scheme D, Royal Australian Air Force. So another one with us, an eagle, eagle with a bomb. Scheme E, Royal Netherlands Air Force. No tail art. Italian, 13th Squadron, 32nd Wing, Amendola Air Base 2021. Does have tail art, but I can't tell what it is from that picture. G is Israeli Air Force, 116th Squadron. It's got a tiger on it, or a panther, or a puma, or some such. All the people who know exactly what these are, I'm sorry. H. Republic of Korea. No tail art. 152nd Fighter Squadron, 17th Fighter Wing, Chongju, 2021. And finally, last but not least, Royal Danish Air Force. And this is Lockheed Martin Fort Worth Plant, Texas, March 21. Free delivery. An array of different two tone grey national markings to choose from. Sorry, my sarcasm probably peeped out a little there. So, destructions. Absolute standard Tammy affair. Uh, it is a stapled booklet. Some precautions. The colour call outs. I'd be interested to see what they're 
calling for for the main colours. And what you do need to be careful of with Tamu instructions is you do get lots of little sidebars with information that can be quite critical to the build, so you have to be quite aware. We have a correction slip, the page two. Oh, sorry, various steps, corrections. So just be aware of this. So you start with the main fuselage half by putting bits and pieces on it. Then we build a cockpit up and a nose wheel bay. Fit those into that upper nose shell. Intakes next. They build up onto that nose piece and then fit down into the main part here, which is too low, you can't see it. Flipping portrait instru instructions on a landscape video, it doesn't work, does it? <coughs> so here you need to choose where you're going to hang your ordnance, if any, and drill out the appropriate holes as directed here. They're all one millimeter, nice and easy. There's a lot going on, isn't there? Painting the weapons bay parts, nice to see, quite detailed information on how to, to get that all coloured in properly. Then jet pipe, building up more detail into this weapons bay area here, and more detail in the weapons bay, it's going to be a real shame not to have those doors open. The whole lot fits into the lower half and is followed by that sort of undercarriage bay and brace part that we looked at. And then you finally add the two halves of the whole thing together. Build up the jet pipe out of all those separate petals. Here is the undercarriage being built and added undercarriage doors. Oh, interesting. So you build the nose leg into the nose fuselage and then cut a part off to allow you to up to lower it. How odd. So I'll, I'll pause that a bit more so you can see. It's the kind of thing you wouldn't trust if anybody else did it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's laid into the nose bay as you assemble it, so it's trapped between the two halves, M1 and M2, and it says don't glue it, and I think it must be this piece here that's holding it up, and then when you snip that off at the end, you can pivot the nose leg down. Cool. Where are we doing? We're building some more doors, then these are the nose bay doors. Then you've got the... It's an EOTS sensor, that big window that goes under the nose, and it's actually got some a sensor inside. More doors, more doors, more doors, and more doors and weapon racks, and then we're onto the weapons themselves. As I said, GBU 31 JDAM, AIM-120C AMRAM in the weapons bay. Oh, that's what the wire is for, the metal shaft is for the weapons bay doors. More doors, more doors, flying controls, tails, and then we build some pylons for the external stores, should you choose to fit any. And here we've got the AIM-9X Sidewinder, and again these have all got painting instructions alongside them. And then the GBU-12 down there, four of, and you fit those on the pylons as per. Then we go on to the fins, fit the fins, and then at the end of the build, we create the ejector seat, the ejection seat. It's called an ejector seat in the instructions, so I'm going to say ejector. 
put the pilot together lovely detailed instructions as to paint him as well sorry the pilot shall we say um, instrument panel and combing and then finally should you wish you can have the boarding step ladder deployed and the canopy goes on last of all in either the opened or closed position as we surmised earlier fantastic nothing that looks terrifically complicated there let me see if I can figure out what this colour is meant to be mixtures okay so what we've got pointed out on here is the lighter grey colour is LP14 and LP59 at 7 to 1. LP14 is IJN Grey, Mazuru Arsenal, and LP59 is NATO Brown. And then the darker grey they're calling for an LP14. No, sorry, that's the lighter grey again. Where is it? LP15, so the darker grey they're saying IJ and grey Yokosuka Arsenal 5 to 1 again with NATO Brown. So you can follow those mixes if you use Tamiya Lacquer Paints. Um, I'll have to do some research to see what the correct colours are if you want to use another manufacturer's paints because I do not know off the top of my head. Decals then, again, huge great sheet and there are multiple sheets in here. This bag's kind of spot welded closed in a few places. Let's grab all this up. So here you've got Tamiya masks. These are not pre-cut, they're merely printed and you cut along the suggested lines and every time I've ever used these they always fit absolutely beautifully if you cut them out correctly and much better than any pre-cut mask I've ever used because they never seem to just fit quite right in my experience. And we've got a relatively small sheet here which has weapon stencils and selected airframe stencil and grill markings. Uh, we also have internal stuff there, seat belts and instrument panel type decals. I'll bring that up for you. Arguably this, this sort of grill decal idea is a tiny bit Gundam, but I used them on this Vesta SU57 and, and that, to be honest I think they look quite good what we've got here please use these decals so I think that's a decal errata some of the RAM detail oh there's so much going on here national marking sheet so as I said <laughs> as I said before the only people with the gonads to put colour on their F-35 so far appear to be the Danish with that little splash of deep red all of the rest are the same two greys in various, various combinations the Aussies have got some black they look very nicely printed I know a lot of people say a lot of things about Tamiya decals in the past I think it was fair to say they they were quite thick I don't really think that's the case anymore modern Tamiya kits I've always found the decals to be perfectly fine and then the big sheet fairly obviously as you could see through the, the um, tissue paper is all that ziggity zaggity ram detail so if you really wanted to spend an awful lot of time with some sanding sticks and patience you could sand off all that raised detail and just use the decals to represent the ram 
if you prefer the raised detail you could also spend a lot of time with tape <laughs> and paint all of these so it's going to be a pay your money and take your choice type deal isn't it in some of these cases using decals will be a lot quicker and easier in others arguably it'll be quicker to paint them but that's quite an expansive sheet there so that then was a quick look through the sprues in the new 48 scale Tamiya F35 kit. Um, I bought the kit from Hannant's in the UK off the shelf as a standard customer. I paid £89.99 for it, so 90 quid. That is a lot of money. Um, but it seems to me that's becoming the sort of benchmark area for 48 scale jets is, is the sort of 65 to 100 pound area. Uh, the F-35 isn't a massive aeroplane, um, so 90 pounds arguably seems a bit expensive. I know the Italeri F-35 is more like 60, so it's a fair bit cheaper. Uh, and coincidentally enough, I intend to get hold of an Italeri version to directly compare it with this one. Um, ultimately value for money can be a little bit subjective um, I am going to use this kit for bare naked build 2 and my reasoning behind that is hopefully to showcase don't let me down Tamiya <laughs> to showcase why these kits cost a lot more and perhaps more relevantly why they're probably worth paying that little bit more for depending of course on your own personal take on modeling what you want out of it a lot of people myself included on occasion like to take a slightly shall we say less well finished kit and batter it into submission and produce a gem from it you know some of us do still build matchbox and monogram and old school airfix kit for that very reason um some of us like to have as little hassle as, as possible from the build process to enable us to get onto the finishing process because some people prefer that. And for those people especially, things like Tamiya can be an absolute godsend. Um, but yes, I think this, this looks beautiful. £90, yes, it's a lot of money. Um, initially when I opened the box and flicked through this bruise quickly whilst in the bags, I was left feeling that I didn't think it looked like a £90 kit. Having had a, a closer look now, albeit still fairly rapidly with you, I feel much more like it looks like it's worth £90. There's a lot of stuff in there, all that, the painting diagrams. There's no expense spared anywhere. I'd have liked to have seen the packaging. I'd like to see the packaging a little bit more sophisticated. Um, that again, it it it, lo it loses a little bit of the feel feel of quality that we like to see from Tamiya kits, but I would imagine it's um possibly a little bit of cost savings that are having to be done. Uh, but yeah, it looks absolutely spectacular. The moulding is incredible, everything you'd expect from new school Tamiya. So if anyone's interested, then in seeing the build, look out for it. There will be a bare naked build coming very soon to this YouTube channel of this exact kit um, and I expect it will be a lot of fun as ever if anybody wants to support the channel directly to help me keep on bringing you this content you can check out the buy me a coffee app link down below uh, where you can support me from as little as five dollars at a time um, and on that note I'd like to say a huge thank you to those of you that already have and continue to do so that is brilliant and it helps me out a lot so with that said, until the next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, and Genesis out.